uh, and the demand. Right, so that is the uh, extent to which Jira uh, has been used by the users across the globe. Yeah, Karan. Sorry, I I didn't. Uh, I was going to ask if we can record the session, but somebody did. I think. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it started from the other. She did. Okay. Good. Okay, so so just to give you, you know, uh, an idea as to uh, how big is Jira is right, and how widely is Jira used, right? So I'm planning to conduct uh, multiple sessions on this and you know, uh, today uh, we'll start off, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to spend the whole hour uh, due to some other uh, you know, uh, con you know, priorities that I have. But I thought instead of procrastinating, which I've been doing it, so let's kick this off and then we can have follow up sessions. Right that way, you know, uh, this is on track and and I've been right. A few people uh, have been, um, you know, uh, trying to get some information. So I had those sessions like with Deepak and Surya. So I think uh, it will be helpful. So today's session will be based on my experience and the knowledge right so i'm not going to cover all the aspects of uh, jira usage but the usage that is required right by each and every one of us right these are the areas that each one of us would definitely touch uh, within jira right so all the other theoretical ones which we don't normally use but it's good to know we'll we'll deal with them uh, in the later sessions, but in today's session, I just wanted to you know, give you a walkthrough of how Jira looks because some of you have not uh, used Jira as you guys mentioned, right? So I uh, so I will show you, okay, and what are the the features that we normally use, or at least I use, right, on a day-to-day -day basis, and some of the things that it offers which we should be using, and I notice that most of the people ignore it, particularly you know, uh, you know. Uh, developers right so all that they i mean they normally don't use this which is very very important for tracking purposes so i just wanted to reiterate uh, those points as well so that all of you guys take that learning understand as to why it is important to update right uh, it's just not the coding only uh, we also need to you know uh, take care of the other aspects uh, you know uh, so that we can track the progress of the project Right, and to make sure that uh, these uh, changes are delivered. So the only way to track is using these uh, tools. OK, so any questions before we proceed further? So feel free to ask questions. If it is not interactive, I'm going to end the session. OK, so I may know the answer. I may not know the answer. If I know, I'll answer it. If I don't know, then I can find out and get back. Right, but yeah, it should be interactive, so it should not be like your regular teams calls or meet calls, right? Only your business analyst or your product owner is ta talking and you're just listening to it. And most scariest thing is the silence, right? So we keep talking and no one responds and you know, you're not sure whether they listen to it or not. Yeah, I know yeah, some yeah. of you are busy juggling through different things, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are listening. Yeah. We're yeah, but as well as listening, but you yeah, know, listening as, is as not said. <laughs> no. exactly. right. So I, I want you to yeah listen and also yeah. Uh, yeah. ask questions, right? Yeah, yeah. participate Good in the conversation. Yeah. Right? Participate in the conversation. Yeah. Anil, yeah. you know, doesn't cover a point. Maybe you know, you can add that as well. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, right. So yeah. I haven't done any certifications or anything, right? So I'm not. An expert in overall project management, as I mentioned, right? Based on whatever the experience that I have uh, with using this tool, I'm going to share uh, my experience with all of you guys. But if you do, if you know something that you know, I have never uh, experienced with Jira. So please feel free to share your experiences, right? Your knowledge as well through these sessions, right? So some of you hold that knowledge. Okay, but uh, we normally hesitate to pass it on, right? So let's not do that. So ask questions or you know share information about Jira. But you know those who are all using any project management tool, not just Jira, you need to you know 
you make the best use of the tool for the benefit of your project delivery. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Very sure. Yes. Sure. I'm so used to meet that I'm searching for the <laughs> share share button at the right next to yeah. leave. Like your audio. Oh my God. Looks like your audio driver is a little out of date. Not now. Okay. Yeah, so now I clicked share. Presenter mode content only. Okay. Share content. Okay. So I selected that option. What do I do now? I'm not seeing any option. Let me try again. Now you will see okay. screen or windows, right? So um, mm. select one of the windows or if you want to share the screen. Share yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, okay. yeah it looks like teams are getting complicated. <laughs> teams are complicated. <laughs> yeah, right. OK, yeah. are you able to see my screen? Yes, Anil. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. One, yeah, one difference, right? So I keep uh, using team, uh, I mean, not as much as I used to, and now I use Meet, right? I keep comparing these two tools, right? So one of the things uh, 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 that Meet offers, where I don't need to ask if I, if you if people are able to see my screen, is it automatically shows or adds me as a presenter. Right, that way I'm sure that people are able to see my screen. Whereas it shows this red borderline, but still, okay, I, I feel that's much easier. Okay. Okay, so I'm sure as most of you have been using, uh, you know, Jira, right? So uh, if you look at this, these are all the different products that Atlassian offers, right? So under the Atlassian umbrella, so we have Jira software, Jira service management, work management, Confluence. So Confluence is, Confluence is a Wikipedia uh, tool. So it's a wiki tool, uh, you know, where you can put everything. It's another ocean, and it's a very, you know, wonderful tool. So you know, I can also talk about Confluence uh, in, in the future sessions. And then Trello, right? So Trello is another software company. So it's another Kanban uh, you know, uh, project management tool that was acquired by Atlassian. OK, and then we have all these. Uh, so, so so this is again, you know, Slack and all these are the integrations with Jira, but from a Jira product uh, portfolio, right? So these are some of the products that they have. Uh, and then this is your dashboard, right? So it will show you what are all the projects that you have accessed. And you know it it will show you what is that you worked on, right? And then what is that you viewed, right? So if somebody creates a ticket and and let's say they forgot to, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> add a, you know, connecting epic to that, right? So what happens is it doesn't show up on your board. So what you can do is then you can come here and then go to this assign to me tab and then find out that. Uh, uh, issue. Okay. So and then start, right? So you have this option of marking uh, or starring a board or anything, right? So all those start ones will be displayed here. So this is where you can find out. If you are not able to find out on your project board, you can find out over here. This is basically your dashboard. Right, and, and uh, there are different user roles like in any software application, right? So there are some standard roles that Jira has, and currently I logged in as an administrator, right? And most of you, I think you have a developer access where you know you will not have access to some of the features like administering users, groups, and all those things, right? And configuring the workflows all these aspects like creating a custom issue. So there will be a whole bunch of other things. So just for everyone's uh, understanding, right? Whenever I say issue or you see issue in Jira, it doesn't mean it's a bug, right? Issue means it could be a story, an epic, um, a bug, or any other issue type you create, okay? 
So yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that all of you are aware of Agile and uh, we also conducted uh, sessions about Agile. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about what is what does it mean in Agile and all those things. OK, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And then in the top menu, right, you can see. So these are all the projects that we have. Uh, and then we you can view all the projects or you can create a project. OK, so we'll talk about individual ones, but just we'll go do a overall uh, uh, walkthrough of what all that we can do within the Jira. And then filters, right? So you can create filters. So a lot of things uh, are based out of uh, you know filters. Uh, so basically, what are the issues that you want to show up on your board? If you want to limit what users can see on your board, you can um, you know configure that using a filter. So you can create a filter and then assign that filter to your boards and you know control what users can see on the board. OK, provided the users have access to your project. Uh, and then the dashboards, right? So dash, dashboards are uh, uh, you know, another important things like this is nothing but reports. So you can create a, uh, you know, a dashboard here. So these are the dashboards that can be created. So you can come here, you can see different dashboards like you can use this to track your project progress. So how many stories have been completed? How many stories are pending to be picked? I mean, in whatever status that they are in, right? So are they still to be picked up by a developer? Or are they development done, but you know, waiting for a tester to uh, pick up that item, right? So you can create various different uh, you know, uh, dashboards here. So you can do a create board and it'll give create a dashboard and it'll give you all those options. Okay. And then people, right? This is basically to invite people to join. Uh, so I, I think this one is only to an administrator. Uh, <clears throat> and then apps, right? So this is the Jira marketplace. So I'm sure you are aware of a marketplace concept, right? So it is where all the integrated applications. Uh, so some of the features that Jira doesn't offer. Uh, so it, it's kind of outsourced it to uh, these different people. So they can you know, bring in all those customizations right, to Jira in, in, in terms of an app. So if you are a developer, you can create a, you know, uh, your own app okay, that you can integrate with Jira. But in some or the other way, it should be useful. So for example, you want to uh, give them a specific ability to run test cases, create releases and all that, then you can uh, create that app and integrate it with uh, you know, uh, Jira. So all those uh, integrated apps uh, will show up in the you know, uh, Jira marketplace. So as you can see it here, right? These are all. So some of them are for free and some of them are paid. OK, and this is the button, right? So uh, I, I was very surprised when when some of the people were not aware that they can create an issue using this button. So I, I, ha I had people complaining that I don't have access to create a, an issue, which is like a story or a bug, uh, but they didn't notice this button. Right, so this button is what you can use to create uh, an issue. So, so, it, so as you can see it here, create an issue. You can select the project for which you want to create an issue. Right, so basically whatever all the projects that you have access to, they'll be displayed here. And then under issue types, right, you can select whatever issue that you want. So issues are also there are uh, you know few issue types that come out of the box with Jira, but if you want to add more issue types, you can go ahead and you know add them so that an administration can administrator can only do it. So they can add it and then uh, you will be able to create such. And then again statuses, right? These are again configurable. So you can cre create your own status how you want to track the progress of an issue uh, within your project. So based on your or uh, the company needs, right? Or the project need, you can create it. 
right? And then again, this product and then assign. So you can assign this to a particular uh, developer or you know, or any user, right? Who has access to this. And see, these are all very, you know, these are some of the uh, fields which are optional and that's why people ignore them, right? So due date, this is very, very important in terms of tracking the progress of this progress of any issue. So you need to, for example, if you are planning on uh, or you are committing on, right? Uh, completing this one by next Friday, put the date here. That way, right? You can track it uh, saying that, okay, so your, your, your BA or your product owner uh, can quickly look at this and see, okay, whether you're on track or off track. OK, and then again, you can uh, add a description, your files and again linking, right? You can link one issue to the other within that project. Uh, and then let's say, for example, you have, uh, you know, uh, an API story uh, or ideally you have a UI story. OK, let's say, and then it has a dependency with some other artifact or, or an, uh, in another component, right? So then you can say that, okay, so there is a story already. So this one is, so you see, you have this description as to what is the relation between the issues. So the, the current issue and the issue that you are selecting here, right? So you have this issue. And for example, for the development completion of my current story, if this story is a blocker, I will say that the current story is blocked by this PMT 1285. So that way, if someone looks at this story and they see that, okay, it's not, still not completed, they can look at this field and understand that, okay, so this one is blocked by this particular story. Okay. And again, let's say if, if this particular change has a dependency with another change, then you can again mark that and say, OK, here it is not there in our, but in, in the Equifax project that we are working on. So so this is also configurable, right? So you can configure it. So if it is cloned, duplicated, caused, relates, right? So uh, all these things you can uh, indicate at an issue level. And then labels, right? So these labels are again, right? These things are used for, uh, you know, filters. So if you want to run a report or create a dashboard, right? you can uh, use these filters to create the dashboards and within that filter, you can use all these different fields or the filter criteria. So components are basically your uh, UI components or API components, right? So for example, uh, if you have, a, uh, you know, uh, if you have a microservices architecture, right, where you have divided into various uh, components, right, then you can say, or indicate that component that will be updated as part of this story, or you are going to create a new component, or you are going to update the existing component, meaning that you are going to add a new endpoint, okay, within uh, an API, right? So you can add that component, or if if there is a uh, you know UI library, uh, then you know uh, that uh, so those those kind of things you can indicate that okay, these things will be impacted with this story. Right. And again, sprint, as you know, right, you can assign a sprint. You need to create the sprint and assign a sprint for that. OK, any, any questions with respect to the the fields that we discussed so far at an issue level? So it's not that mandatory to uh, view uh, component or uh, to select component and few other fields. So, right, right. So far, we are using the sprint and the epics. Yeah, we don't see not that everybody will have that, right? So, if you have that information, you can update it. And and at an organization level, right? You can define. Uh, you know what should be optional and what should be mandatory. Yeah. Emma, your voice is breaking. Yeah. 
okay but but as um, anil mentioned acknowledging or adding is also participation so um, a, you know acknowledging that you understood is also um, something that gives feedback right okay um, not just staying silent so please i'm encouraging people to participate deepak surya all of you guys as well no question no questions from our end kiran yeah there will be yeah, if you don't ask questions there will be questions from my side so <laughs> you have understood then i would expect answers so. uh, anil i have one more question like uh, what is this epic uh, oh. oh okay so yeah epic is uh, you know to make it simple right it's a high level requirement okay so which product are you working for i uh, still not deployed anywhere uh, sudhakar here okay so before this did you work where did you work performance testing like uh, oh. i was related to, uh, okay 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 to performance right okay so epic so it's like a high level requirement or a high level feature so for example okay, okay so for example uh, you have a, a scooter right so currently can the scooter uh, stand on its own no right no 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 right so you need to use a stand, stand or something to support it right mm, yes so have you seen recently that there is a company who has come up i, I think even ola or somebody is claiming that they their scooters can stand on their own okay so so that so you have an existing system or a new system where you want to build something so you divide so let's say manufacturing a scooter right so what are the different features or uh, the components that you need to manufacture as part of building a scooter so you need to have the a body for the scooter okay yeah. you need to build an engine right so whether you decide to build it on your own or buy it from a different vendor is a different thing but these are different components right that you need to build in order to release a scooter into the market right yeah. so uh, you know uh, the high level requirement is that you want to manufacture a scooter correct so let's say yes. if somebody comes and tells you that okay we we need to manufacture a scooter then you just clap and then go back and do what you don't know right so somebody the ceo said build a scooter so yes. everyone goes back right we are, yeah we are going to build a let's say for example a solar scooter right so you see what uh, comes and says that okay so we are going to build a solar scooter everybody is excited they clapped and see what said cheers and asked everyone to go back so you go back to your desk and sit okay and says that okay we need to build a solar scooter so how is that you are going to build a solar scooter who is going to build what right so you need all yeah. those requirements right so the the high level requirement is an epic and then within that high level requirement uh, you need to divide those requirements into smaller epics correct okay yeah right so those smaller epics are called as stories user stories right got it so yeah. why, why is it called as stories because you are going to you know uh, tell that requirement from the users perspective not from the manufacturers perspective right so you don't yes. build something that you think will be uh, useful right you need to build something that will be useful for the users yes, yeah right so that's why it's called as a user story so even epic it's a is also a user story but that's a you know a high level user story Okay. Right, a user says that I need an electric scooter. Correct. So that's your high-level story. But the user will also say that this electric scooter should be charged within one hour. Right. He will also say that this uh, I should be able to uh, take that battery out of the scooter, take it to my apartment, plug it in, and charge it. I don't want to 
set it up wherever I park my scooter and then charge it. Right. Yeah. So then he will also say that I should have a swappable battery. So these are all various requirements. So Epic is a high level requirement. And uh, these are like uh, uh, small parts of Epic inside that, right? Right. What are stories the requirements? Are stories. Correct. Okay. Stories are uh, parts, uh, the, the si sizable parts of those requirements that can be handled okay. within a given sprint. Yeah, understood. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Anil. Uh, one question. Uh, in general, in Equifax world, uh, who creates this uh, dashboard? Uh, mm. I mean, Jira board. Good question, right? Uh, so, Equifax is a very <laughs> is an enterprise, and they have uh, uh, an enterprise company, and they have different departments for each activity, right? So, they have a dedicated team who manages the uh, Jira administration. Right, okay. so that team defines what issue types should be there. That team decides what kind of a workflow that each project should follow. Right, so there is a dedicated team that creates all of this. Oh, okay. So in teams, right, you have two different types of projects. OK, team managed projects and company managed projects. So team managed projects are something that any user can create, but they may not have access to everyone, right? So again, company managed projects are where again you need to have that user level access, but you can bring in uh, the stories or issues from other projects as well. But uh, long story short, that's managed by a different team in Equifax. Okay, for example, uh, for our team, our team is our team is named as Arctic Foxes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is it the product owner who creates uh, of the of the stream who creates the Jira board or oh, no, no, it's no. not the product owner. No. Okay. So uh, in Equifax world, well, product owners create <laughs> product owners can give access, can create filters, okay, to the boards. So that's what we normally do. We don't we don't do any custom things, right? We okay. can give grant access to that particular project only. So whatever the project that I have access to. Okay. Yes, Anil. Uh, right now. Uh, so Anil, recently when I got a chance, as you said, uh, we have the tribes defined right in Equifax. So similarly, we were into UCT tribe and uh, I got a chance to create Zira boards for our entire project. So we used to get epics from product architects and uh, the rest of all the epic story breakdown and creation of all the strings all was handled by myself there. Yeah. So some of the things are managed by the uh, uh, okay RTEs. Okay. Okay. So they manage some of things, but what I got to know from them is they are not the ones who add these custom things. So they don't add these custom fields or custom issue types or whatever it is, right? So we just need to follow whatever was uh, created by that uh, dedicated team. OK, um, so though I have a Jira board, uh, I couldn't see any tickets in my Jira. I mean, any AHA, uh, sorry, uh, any epics in my Jira board. Can I know the reason? Uh, Any Jira boards. OK, so you need I mean, to go to your board setting. OK, so let me show you that anyhow, since you asked that question, right? So yeah, so OK, let's finish with this one. So any more questions around creating an issue? Right. OK, so I'll take that people have no questions. So. <clears throat> For example, let's go to a project. Okay, I'm on this project, right? So now in this project, you have different boards. So I have I have one Kanban board, this PM PMT board, and let's say I can add one more board, right? So 
each board will have a filter. So if you, you click on this ellipsis and then go to your board settings. OK, so here. I don't think you guys have this access because this is only I, I believe it's admins only. I don't think you can see this. Uh, here you see the saved filter. OK, so you click on this edit filter. So the that board is using this filter. OK, so what is this filter is this one? So it shows all the all the issue types within this board product maintenance task board with all statuses with all assignees. Right, this is the board. So let's say for example, uh, if you want, if these stories are not showing up, then you need to figure out a unique field. So for example, the team, right? The assigned team should be your architect, architect foxes, correct? Uh, yes, yes, I believe. And that's right? what Purna mentioned. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, Anish. Yeah. yeah. So, first thing you need to make sure that on all the issues and stories, you have this assigned team value as Arctic Foxes. Okay. And then you come here, click on more, and then here. So, here I don't have field. This is a higher tech Jira. So, you need to search for that field. Okay. okay, and then okay. select that field and the particular field value. And save that filter. Then you will be able to see all those stories. Okay, so yeah, Poon, I can help you with. We can connect later. I know I mean, not today, but yeah. maybe tomorrow or day after whenever you're free, call me. Okay, so sure, we can man. we can connect and get that result because we also face that issue. OK, it is okay. so whatever I'm telling you the solution, right? It is not something that I learned through going through some Jira tutorials or anything. This was a practical problem, so which uh, we discussed and we figured out a solution. Okay. So okay. yeah. Yeah, I know we can we can resolve that issue. Don't worry. OK, yeah. Thanks. Anil. Yeah. yeah, so one thing to remember is everything that shows right is based off of a filter. OK. So, okay. so in a project, right? You can create multiple boards, right? So what happens if you create multiple boards? Whatever is there on the project will show up on each board. But what is the point in creating? Well, recently, you know, MMS team had to create an additional board, right? So for them, if they need to create an additional board, they don't want to see all the issues on the additional board as well. They want to create an additional board so that they want to filter out some of the issues and display only those. So in order to achieve that, right, what you need to do is create a separate filter and filter out okay, what you want to see and then configure that filter for the new board. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Anil. OK, any 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 questions? So, so this is basically to, to help you know, uh, talk through and try to resolve these practical issues, right? That we face day in and day out. Uh, Anil Banu here. Uh, this is the extinction for what Purna said. Uh, that issue can be with uh, the user roles. User roles, I don't think so. user role, as long as you have access to the board, right? Okay. So, for example, your your board will be there. OK, so as long as that issue has a board linked to it, you should be able to see it. it user access is not an issue. OK, your access to that board, uh, they can access the epic center. Absolutely. Because at an epic level also, right, you can assign this assigned team and all this stuff. OK. Yeah. And okay. Uh, related to the components, uh, do we have to enable any Git for Jira so that we can see UI and API components? No, 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 no. That's manual. So it's just a list that you add, right? You need to add a list to that field in the Jira itself and pick one of them. So there's no integration required for that. Okay. So it's just like a label saying that it is API. Okay. Correct. 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 It's a drop-down field. 
field type is drop down and uh, the drop down is predefined okay uh, rather than keeping it on uh, summary like this is an api card we have this component field no no within api let's say so see it's if so your app is a monolithic app right yeah. But whereas in Equifax, uh, you know, the I9 system is a microservices architecture where the system is divided into various uh, microservices. So each one has a different component. So for example, for I9 form, we have form I9. Uh, and then for migrations, we have EEV data migration API. There's one component for API, one for UI. Okay. okay. So what we follow there is if they if if the if the change requires uh, code change in api and ui we create two different stories and even within api and ui right if it involves more than one component then we create separate story for each one because see the objective or the uh, or the framework of agile says that divide it into the smallest possible work unit so that you can handle within the sprint Right, yes. so you don't create a story that cannot be completed within your defined sprint, right? So if your sprint is two weeks, your effort should be within the two sprints, which means that the requirement should also be, you know, uh, something that can be completed within the two sprints. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. So logbox, what tool are you using? Uh, same, uh, Jira. Okay, so you guys have any questions? No, actually we are using daily, same Jira and we create stories and bugs. And also so you, want to, you want to share anything, any, any issue that you encountered and how you resolve? Like. Uh, no. So what you have shown in the picture, we follow the same. Mm -hmm. uh, we if any if anything is blocked, we can we can mark it as a link link to the different uh, story or bug, and we can mark it as a bug, particular story. Yeah. So how do you track a particular story in terms of its completion? So for example, uh, the, today is your sprint day, start day, right? And the developer has committed to a particular story, right? So you started off. So today is your first day said, OK, I picked up this story. I'm I'm going to start the development today, right? So again, you have a stand up tomorrow. So he'll give you the same status. So the status continues into next week as well. So how would you know that when this guy is supposed to complete this story? How do you track that? Uh, basically, we uh, we speak in every every day status call. So we ask uh, once they complete uh, the development side, then they move to the pre uh, request approval side, code review approval side. So uh, once that approval is done, then we we can pick. So mostly uh, first week at the end of that, uh, most of, some stories will complete from development side. So we we pick for testing those. Basically, they they will say uh, when they do complete those those stories. Okay. Is Anjali? Think, who is your BA? Anjali, right? No, Anjali, Anjali is uh, DA team. Rohita. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so there there is a way to track it, right? So, see the thing is you. Uh, by just looking at the board, you will not know whether you are on track or not, right? So you need to. So let me see. Yeah, I don't have a Jira project here. So for example, yeah, it's not here. Maybe next time I'll create one and we can. So in each issue, right? There, is, there are four different fields. Let me see if I have and we migrated the INN board. That is the problem. Product management, product management is a Kanban board. Okay, uh, so a sprint board uh, by any chance? Sorry. Uh, do you want to see a sprint board by any chance? Yeah, 
you want you, you able to share your screen yes yes stop sharing uh, let me know when you're yeah, able to see yes, yes, yeah yes. I'm, I'm just going to my board All friends. Okay, just go to one story. Yeah, go to that side, sub placeholder story. Okay. okay, go to time, time tab. Right, so see, beautifully, all these fields are left blank. Right, so this is the flip side of option, optional fields. Okay. So here they clearly get, so these are the fields, right? What is the actual start date? What is the actual end date? What is the planned start date? What is the planned end date? So for example, this should be part of your, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the daily activity, right? So today I am the developer and today, let's say it's Monday, I am taking up this story. I know the story points uh, required to complete. And then what I should be doing or uh, what I should be forced to be doing is update these two fields here. What is the planned start day? What is the planned end day? So if I'm sub, if I have a three story point story, then I should be, I should not be taking more than three days from a development perspective, right? Because at least one day should be left for testing. So what I should write is here in the planned start start date, I should put Monday day, and end date I should put Wednesday day. And then during the standard, when the BA or PO, whoever are the scrum master, whoever is the scrum master, right? Simply he has to go to this field and look at that. Okay, when is this supposed to be completed? It's supposed to be completed by Wednesday. What is today? Thursday. What happened? Why is this not completed? Right? So that way you can track the progress of the story. If you leave these fields blank, it's very difficult to track this uh, no, progress of the story. Uh, yeah, in that case, just we give only story points like the, the story is small, then we give some uh, three points or five points, but we can we cannot mention a start date in date. So Depend you on. pick up a three story point and so you're going to take one month. Uh, not one month. If it is complete immediately, then we it, it will come for testing. What do you mean? Define immediately. Uh, yes, yeah, but uh, yeah, we are not following the exact yeah, see, process. See, yes. see, mm. see, see, the thing is, how, how was uh, devel uh, development effort estimated uh, you know, in, in the earlier days is everything is linked to time, right? Whether it is one day, two days, three days, four hours, five hours, right? In Agile, what they say is that it is not a it's it's not a you know linear calculation. The effort is not linear. It depends on various factors. So what is the so for example, you have a new member in your team. He also needs to start on working, right? And let's say you have a senior member and you have a requirement. In order to complete the requirement, the experienced may take two days, whereas the fresher may take three days, right? So what it says is, do not say that it should be done in, in a, a particular number of days. You need to define a range. So for example, if it's a one story point, the, it should be completed within one to two days. So there is a date range defined for a, a effort. Right, so if it, you, you define in whatever way, right? So I'm just telling you the Equifax way. In Equifax, how it is defined? This was defined by the, you know, somebody who are experts in uh, Scrum, right? So they said, okay, the effort, if you say it is a one story point, it should be completed within two days. If it is two story points, it should be completed in three days. If it is three, then five, so, so on and so forth. You have to define the end. Otherwise, you know, you can you cannot say that okay i will do it immediately or i will do it uh, you know what you have to define right so i may take 5 days i may take 3 days or i may take 10 days 
right? We cannot say that, okay, we will do it, but it may take time. So you have to quantify it, but the quantifying your effort can be a range, not a definitive number. Yes. Sir. Okay. So that way, right? Your PO will understand that, okay, if a three story pointer is handled by a fresher, I, I know that it's going to take five days. But if it's being handled by an experienced developer, I know it can be done in three days. So, okay. So you need to define. You, you should attach the time component to your effort. Unless and until you do that, you can never commit to a uh, project. Yes. Okay. So then how do you track that? Is through this. Through this information. Okay, so I'm not saying that uh, in, in my squad, this is being followed religiously. Let me tell you honestly, nobody follows this. Uh, well, okay. we follow with due date, Anil, but you know, developers uh, have problems so with what that is your, too. Like, so what is due date? Your development due date or uh, total story completion due date? Only development due date uh, so that we'll be tracking with the QE team uh, whether they'll be able to get all the inputs and you know, dev team is handing over the story to uh, QE team by that particular date. No, no, the, how do you track? That's what I'm saying. You already put due date as development due date, correct? Yes. And your story includes both development and your story level testing, correct? Yes, yes. I'm. You're not going to create a separate story for your story level testing, right? So I don't think that is the right way. So maybe what you can do is the plan start and end days for development and due date for testing. Oh. So uh, people have problem giving me the due date itself. <laughs> no, no. See, this world yeah. is full of problems that we cannot complain. <laughs> no, right? I mean, uh, they're yeah. feeling like if there are, uh, you know, kind of commitment when they give kind right. of date uh, in the story. Uh, since yeah, we track it during our stand-ups, right? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we have to respect their feelings, but we need to respect Jira also, right? So, yes. so th we should find out a way, right, to get this information. No, I'm not saying it's easy, but yeah, <laughs> it's a diff difficult True. thing, right? If it was easy, then we wouldn't need so many people involved in the project, True. right? True. Yeah, but, but I just wanted to... You know, bring these up saying that, okay, so this is how extensive it is that, you know, uh, we can utilize all these features and which will help us in tracking, right? Otherwise, if somebody asks that, okay, what is the status of your sprint? And it is the second week of the sprint. So what would be your response? And what would it, it will be based on, right? So you will be like thinking how many stories are there, how many development completed, how many test pending, right? So to track that, right, you need to create boards. That is the dashboards, right? You have to create boards and then you can track it. So I will show that in the next meetings, right? I'll show you how to create dashboards and uh, which will help us to track the you know, status of your epics or sprints. Okay. Oh, I broke my promise. I thought I'd skip to half an hour, but yeah, I think we are already four minutes. But okay. I, mean, I have one more question. Uh, how do you manage your Kanban board? Uh, because I've seen your screen when you're sharing. Uh, so we are pretty new. Like, uh, so when we had client visit last week, he asked us to split SRE tasks into Kanban board instead of uh, mixing them into our uh, existing sprint board because it's disturbing the velocity and all. So oh. we have created the Kanban board, but I uh, literally have uh, trouble in managing that because we do not have any sprints like we have in the other boards. Uh, we just, you know, uh, based on developer, uh, you know, ask, SRE will be picking up some of the other task and he'll put the story into in progress. So how do you actually handle that? Is it based on priority or uh, something else if you can yeah. guide me through. Yeah, absolutely. That is based on priority, right? So it is not an incremental thing, 
right? So Kanban right. is basically is like very straightforward. You get a so you, let's say you have five items, okay, on your to do board, okay. Yeah. So you have five items, and now someone says item one is important. You pick that up, start, right, and finish it. Someone else comes and says pick up five, move pick up five into in progress, complete it, right? It. Yes. Or or you are midway through one, but someone says, I don't want one, I want five. You can move one back or leave it one over there, move five. Okay. Whereas what happens in sprint is once you commit to a sprint, you have to stick to sprint. Right? That's what Scrum uh, uh, no, uh, uh, suggests that never disturb your uh, sprint scope. Whatever you have defined for a sprint, and once your sprint has begun, you have to stick to the items you committed for a sprint. You can play around with your backlog, product backlog, but not with your sprint backlog. Right? Okay. So what happens if you move it, right? All that will show up on scope creep. Right? And it will impact the team performance. So Kanban is typically used for task oriented things. So I have something to be completed by this quarter or by this month. OK, so then I create stories for whatever needs to be done, right? And then keep them uh, going on. So I assign it to people. They start on that and they work on that particular item. So either sprint beginning, sprint midway. So there is no concept of sprints in Canva. So are your SRE task dependent or influencing your sprint completion? Uh, yes, kind of. Uh, initially, it was like that. Uh, so once there would be very high uh, number of stories related to SRE and once there would be none. So, you know, the velocity charts keep on, uh, you know, it, they are not stable, so uh, which is not really expected by the client. Uh, so that is the reason he asked us to shift to Kanban board for SREs. That is how they actually do with the other SRE team. Right, 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 right. Yeah, the SRE groups board itself is a Kanban, it seems. That's what I heard. Yeah. Right? It, because they don't follow, see, their tasks are all releases and all these activities, right? So they're not tied to any sprints as such, right? So I'm uh, so they are working on something, and now someone comes up with a request saying that okay, can you please deploy this to prod? Okay, so they cannot say wait for next sprint. Right. Correct. Yes. So that is why they have to follow the Kanban. So now you understand the use case for Kanban, right? Yes. Uh, so wherever yes. you cannot restrict your deliverable to sprints is when you choose the Kanban approach. Got it. Right. So Kanban is like your assembly line. Got it. Yes. So based on priority, you are uh, you know, making the tasks in progress and uh, yes, yes. how we are getting things done. Yeah. Got it. Based on priority. It's completely based on your priority. Put those items, create the tickets, and then move them around. Got it. And and Thank what you. Kanban says is you should know, you should limit your number of items in progress at any given point in time. Okay. Got so okay. you you bite whatever you can chew. That is the bottom line. The Kanban. Okay. Uh, looks like Hema has some questions. Kanban and Firebird are same. Sorry. Kanban board and triage are both same. Triage board and Kanban are similar. What is triage board? Uh, recently, I heard that uh, uh, for recent time, I heard that uh, production maintenance tickets they want to use the Kanban board, which is also called as a triage. So the top fifteen yeah. tickets, uh, yeah, they limited that the top fifteen priority tickets will be moved to Kanban. Uh -huh. So, so do you have that? So it, it must be a Kanban. They just named it like that. Can you show share your screen if you have access no, to that? No, no, I was not. Uh, 
the system right now. No, there are only see if you create. Uh, so I don't think there is any such board type, right? There are only three. Uh, earlier used to be two. Now I'm seeing the third one as a bug board. Uh, so there is a scrum board, Kanban board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe trash board is something they just named it like okay. So there is no, no. that's not uh, any you know uh, project type board. Ah uh, yeah. Okay, awesome guys. I think we are already three minutes past the uh, time. So thank you so much for the interactive session, right? So that's why I you know um, <clears throat> I made sure that I'm not coming up with any PPT, right? So this should be more practical. No theory, right? So let, let's do this. We'll continue. So one thing is, uh, OK, whenever uh, I, next session, I try to give you guys good heads up that that way, uh, whatever things that you want to know uh, in terms of your day to day uses of uh, agile, if you can let me know, then we can focus that particular topic for the session. OK, otherwise I I'll take my liberty to choose the topic. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Sure. Thanks for your time. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, Anil. Thank you. Thank you for accommodating your valuable time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Anil.